Let's meet a Peter Kirkham, former Detective Chief Inspector in the Met Police. Afternoon to you, Peter. Afternoon. Um, like any of these videos, you see them in isolation, you see one perspective, and I think the, uh, the uh, Yorkshire have come out and made that point, West Yorkshire have come out and made that point, that it, as ever, it's one perspective we're seeing here. No. Um, it, it always looks, if there's a lot of shouting going on and there's a bit of a melee, it always looks bad, regardless of how anybody or where anybody sides on this. What was your reaction as a former cop of many years when you first saw that? Um, uh, as you said, there are two issues. Number one, what was she arrested for? Um, and if it's as has been reported simply because of that comment, then I'd have serious con concerns about whether it was necessary. Yeah. Um, if it was that, that the officer found that comment offensive, um, then I don't see what criminal offence there is there anyway. There is no criminal offence of being offensive. Um, otherwise, large portions of the media would be closed down. Yeah, um, true. There is an offence of using um, threatening or whatever words doesn't appear to have amounted to that. Um, causing intentional harassment, alarm or distress. Again, doesn't appear to be that, certainly not to any significant extent. Mm. So, and, and, you know, we got the little clips of the officer's attitude there, which sounds a bit like an overreaction and a bit like a loss of temper. Um, but you'd need to know the whole context, what led up to the video, what happened after, what was happening off camera, yeah. uh, the whole piece. But the second thing is then uh, there have been concerns expressed about the use of force made when the arrest was made. Now, that's a, a sort of separate issue. Um, was the arrest necessary? That's one issue in and of itself. And was excessive force used yeah. making that arrest? Um, then that would be a second issue. And one of the other factors that few people, but that there are some, have made this on on social media is that you 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 can be autistic and still commit a crime. Of course, just because oh, somebody cool. has a disability or a, um, a a condition or whatever of whatever type doesn't mean to say you're immune from being arrested for if no, you do something wrong. And of course, this particular person we understand at 16, so underage drinking. I mean, we can read into that whatever we like. Was originally given a lift home by the police because she was found intoxicated in the city centre. So one would assume that the story really started there and eventually at some stage spread into something else and while escorting this girl back into the house she made the comment about you look like my lesbian nan which as it transpires apparently her nan is a lesbian so and I don't even think if her nan wasn't a lesbian I'm not sure that's a criminal offence or even a hate crime but so there's a few things that are being muddy in the waters here a little bit I sense Peter. Very much so. Um, if you've got someone who's drunk or under the influence of alcohol, then you know they're going to act in less rational ways than when they're sober. They're going to do things that are less rational than when they're sober. Yeah. You sort of expect the unexpected. And any experienced police officer would let that wash over them like water off a duck's back. There used to be something back in the olden days of the instruction book uh, the bound book the Metropolitan Police issued that talked about idle and silly comments. Mm. And it said, you know, if you're the subject of uh, idle and silly comments, then the best thing to do is ignore them. Ignore it. What, what are the... likely to open a whole barrel of... Indeed. Worms. Yes, it's, it's really not, not worth anybody's time. Uh, one of the issues, of course, that always surround things like this is um, the amount of officers that show up. Um, I know there can be good reason for that. You know, you hear people bragging on social media that, you know, it took six of them to hold me down. And, um, of course, it didn't take six of them. Two could have done it. One could have probably done it. But six are there as much for the, the, the prisoner's safety as anything else, right? In, in, indeed. I mean, this I've been spent decades trying to educate the, the media and the politicians and the public about this with very limited success. Um, uh, you know, I wish I had a pound for every time I've sort of forgotten run through this. But if you're going to arrest somebody that doesn't want to be arrested, then they are going to use some degree of physical force to resist you. 
And if as part of that arrest process, and you normally would be if someone's resisting arrest in a physical way, you're wishing to put handcuffs on them, then you're not going to do that without the use of quite a significant amount of force to get the two hands in the right place yeah. to, to be able to connect the handcuffs. Now, if you're doing that with one or two officers, you're likely to need to use more individual force and more sort of blunt force, if you yeah. like, um, to achieve that aim uh, which may well be lawful, and, and whether it's lawful or not is sort of irrelevant to the amount of force. If we're going to be doing it, we need to be doing it with the least possible force. Yeah. And if you've got the officers available, you use more officers. Uh, and, and the thing would be you take somebody to the ground. Well, that removes sort of like half the options for you know, directions of movement. Yeah. You've got something to hold them against. Um, but you don't want to be putting weight on the body itself, the chest or the back, because that obstructs breathing and we've over the years seen loads and loads of criticism of police for doing that and it causes positional asphyxia and people die quite rapidly uh, and and unexpectedly yeah uh, so the advice is that you would use multiple officers if you've got them to put force onto the extremities so you hold down a leg an arm another leg another arm well there's four officers gone for a start yeah you have someone monitoring the head First of all, to prevent them injuring themselves. Second of all, to monitor their um, breathing and to keep them talking, to distract them from thinking about violent escape. And thirdly, to prevent them throwing it around and headbutting people and spitting at people. That's five. Yeah. Then you then you start thinking about putting the arms together and putting the handcuffs on. Well, that's quite a difficult thing to do if you don't do it all the time. And police officers don't do it all the time. No, that's, true. that's true. And this pr this person at the time, the person being arrested, has got adrenaline flowing through them with exactly. booster rockets on. Exactly. So they're, they're a whole it's lot true. stronger than they might be in any so, other scenario. And so you've got six or seven officers. You've got a sub subject on the floor. They're shouting and squealing. And it looks absolutely awful. But nobody gets anything more than yeah. a few dents and scrapes and handcuffs are put on successfully and then they're yep. picked up and they're taken away. There it and is. That is the better way of doing it and it's exactly the way officers are trained. So if the officers were there for whatever reason, then using them to do that would make sense to me. Of course. And if you haven't seen the whole bit with the video, there's some perspectives you can't see on it anyway. Uh, I don't know if the full length of the video has been uh, made public, but from what I've seen, I've got issues around was the arrest necessary, and it may or may not turn out to be the case when the full story is known. Um, but when the arrest is made, the use of force to me, there doesn't appear to be anything jumping out of that saying there's a problem there. There it is. Peter, thank you. I tend to agree with that assessment as well. Peter Kirkham, former Detective Chief Inspector at the Med. He's far more qualified than me to make that judgment. But if you just move away from sensational headlines and one single perspective on social media then you can come away with an entirely different set of views on that